Ready? Yep. Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back. It's Ben and Ashley. Welcome to our channel if you are new. In today's video, we are gonna talk about jaundice in babies. Uh, from our experience, our little boy was born six months ago and was born with jaundice. And um, it's something that a lot of babies are being born with these days, right? Yep, yep. big time. Yeah. Yeah, and so, uh, you know, our story, just to kind of quickly summarize our story, if you haven't seen our video we did already on uh, our birth story, yeah, that goes into a little more detail on the full story. But to just kind of summarize it, you know, our baby had jaundice. The uh, hospital made a very big deal out of the jaundice to the point where they called CPS on us because uh, we took him out of the we hospital. took him out of the hospital and the hospital wanted to make sure his jaundice levels were at a, a lower level before we took him home. And um, long story short, we knew that you know we could care for him much better at home and get the levels down. Um, More of a natural way. Yes. Sunshine, eating the right foods, yes. feeding you the right foods. Yeah, so. opposed to putting him under the blue light therapy. Is that what it's called? UV light The therapy. UV light therapy at the hospital. We wanted to do it the natural way. Um, and he's fine. His jaundice levels were down literally the next day um, because we were then forced to have him tested. <laughs> um, so yeah, check out that video if you missed it. Um, lots of good info in it. But this video, we're just gonna, we're gonna talk about baby jaundice. And why it happens and yeah, what's the root cause of it. And this is just, you know, this is our story. You know, we're, every, every person is different, right? So we're just gonna share our experience with jaundice right. yeah that's not to say that your experience is jaundice with jaundice is going to be exactly like ours but we're just sharing our experience so totally yeah you, do your research yeah. this is just what we've gathered as far as information and what feels good to us and you know use your own intuition and what seems right for you and your family yep so when we were in the hospital we had to talk to the doctor about taking the baby out of the hospital. So when we had that conversation, the doctor was trying to instill fear in us that, hey, look, if you do not, uh, if those jaundice levels get too high, then uh, your baby could get, what is it, kernic? It, it's Kernicterus. I don't know how to pronounce it exactly. Um, but they but, printed out this sheet yeah. and they they showed us what it was and they said basically what it is is when the jaundice bypasses the liver, it, it then goes into the blood brain barrier, which then can cause permanent uh, brain damage to the baby. So from the hospital's perspective, they were just trying to cover their butt, which That's fine. We, we totally get. You know, we have our views on what jaundice actually is, and we know that jaundice right. is an overburdened liver. And we've learned this, this information comes from medical medium, Anthony William. Um, and like Ben said, it's, yeah, it's an overburdened baby liver. They come into this world and the liver isn't working at 100% like you might think because there are so many toxins nowadays that, you know, mom and dad pass down toxins to the baby and that's already in their liver. And then, you know, some babies might get new medical treatments right when they're born. That's adding more toxins to the liver. Um, and, you know, so at best it's maybe working at 70% is what we've learned. Um, but in most cases, it's a lot less. Um, and that it, it could be a lot less, especially if it's a really stressful pregnancy or complicated birth, because that's also adding stress to the baby. And um, if the mom has a extremely overburdened liver, 
we also learned, and this was so surprising to this learn, was cool. yeah. is that it, well, it's not cool, it's just interesting. Well, it was an interesting fact. That yeah, it's, so when the mom has a really overburdened liver and when she's pregnant, it'll start using the baby's liver also as a filter because they're connected. And so then that's really adding more burden to the baby's liver, which is just, you know, a no-brainer case for jaundice. Yeah, so that's why it's important that the mom takes care of the liver because anything that yeah. the liver can't handle, it ends up uh, falling on the baby, which then can cause jaundice. Um, and, you know, when a baby is, is born, they immediately try to uh, intervent with the baby and give them all sorts of different medical treatments. Yeah. And, you know, we denied all of that stuff, but that could have even overburdened his, his liver even more. Yeah. So we're so glad that we decided not to do any of that stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, that aside, like not doing that, his burden was still, or his burden, his liver was, was still, still overburdened. Him. And, you know, we've been cleansing for almost five years, almost now. Five years now. So when he was born uh, a little over four years, but still, like, you know, we're in our 30s and we've had years of, like, buildup in our livers and unfortunately it gets passed down to our, our children. Yeah, so the jaundice for us wasn't as much of a big deal. We actually looked at it as kind of a good thing because now his body was kind of telling us that hey he's got to work on his liver so we got to give you mm -hmm. all of the right foods to then heal yeah. his liver and we need to start giving him the right stuff right too, yeah right? yeah and another thing i don't think we mentioned was so when a, like all babies are born their liver is really trying to rev up right like it's still it's not working yet like it's trying to learn how to rev up and work and it has like over 2,000 chemical functions that it has to do so you know it's like trying to work itself up plus it's battling and trying to filter all these toxins if it has an overburdened liver yeah. elderberry syrup kits are here if you enjoy our videos and want to support the channel, these kits are a great way to help support us and support yourselves at the same time. We take one tablespoon a day for daily immune system support and one tablespoon three times a day when we feel a cold or flu coming on. These kits make 16 ounces, so it's enough for your whole family. Pick up your kit today at thatrootlife.com. So when we got him home, the things that we did to help him heal was a lot of TLC, right? Lots of loves, lots of hugs, lots of cuddles, um, and lots of natural sunlight. So bringing him out in the sun, not putting him in too much direct sunlight, just a little bit. Um, but we did a lot of indirect sunlight, like maybe um, by a window, having him just in a diaper, so it's um, touching as much skin as possible. And then making sure I had lots of foods going in me that were liver supportive so that he could get it through the breast milk. So we did like lots of artichokes, um, Brussels sprouts, asparagus, um, radishes. Um, and it's really important to do um, those foods steamed because it's a lot easier um, on the digestive system for the baby. And the liver for the mama. And the liver, yeah. So even through the breast milk, it's a lot easier for digestion if those things are steamed. Um, and like leafy greens and then just lots of fresh fruits and veggies. Things that are just going to be super supportive to the liver. Yeah, and that was... Uh, something we couldn't really provide him in the hospital because well, he was in a dark room. Oh, right. Yeah, the sunlight. There was a we, little window. We were, I was coming home. I was making food, and then I was bringing it into Ashley. Right, because I was staying there with him, yeah. you know. So it's like the food thing was possible, but it just wasn't as convenient. And... You know, there was no need for him to be in the hospital for just that when we could do it at home. 
right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it, it, you know, it, it cleared up on its own, which, you know. Yeah. It, it, His it, levels went down even the next day, like we mentioned, because we went and did a little test. Um, and then after that, you could just see it in his skin and his his eyes. Um, I think his eyes, uh, the yellowing in his eyes, like went away kind of first. And then he still had a lot of like red, redness, blotchiness to his skin um, for at least like a few weeks. But that slowly went away. Um, and then he was fine. You know, and, and he was. We monitored him, made sure like you know he wasn't getting a high fever or you know crying hysterically like things that are signs of the you know that would lead to the scary brain damage um scenario um yeah and in the idea that it just cleared up on its own can be a tricky one if you didn't know this information right right you could uh your baby could have jaundice and then the jaundice goes away and you're like oh he's there oh, good he's to go. fine look there's no more jaundice right. when really that was a that was you know a sign that that the baby has liver issues and there there's other signs too right yeah so his jaundice cleared up like that was all good and great but we knew that his liver was overburdened and that once the jaundice was gone, it didn't mean it was the end of the overburdened liver. Um, and signs to look out for, you know, besides jaundice are things like um, baby acne, acid reflux. So if they're like spitting up more than just like a little normal baby spit up, um, cradle cap. So when they get the scaly skin on their head, um, stomach issues, uh, pandas, rashes, eczema, psoriasis. And so for our baby boy, he um, started getting stomach issues probably after like a month or so, or maybe after a few weeks. Yeah, it was like a few weeks in. Um, and he, he started getting the cradle cap on his head um, and getting rashes. Very congested, like, like he couldn't even it was hard for him to to latch on because he couldn't breathe out of his nose yeah you know? and the congestion is related to strep bacteria but that's also because his liver was overburdened and probably couldn't handle filtering that out very much so um yeah those are things to look out for and knowing that your child or your baby is dealing with an overburdened liver still and it needs to be taken care of and so um, it can be tricky for like for people though who don't know this information yeah. this is part of the reason we we found it to be really important because right. if you just ignore this and ignore those other signs and symptoms then down the road say five years 10 years 15 years 20 years down the road eventually when that that child's liver gets so overburdened mm -hmm then it allows other things like viruses and strep and to really take over to really take over yeah you know? and those those things that i mentioned for most babies will go away and then you're like oh they're great like they don't have any health issues and you know that just means that the liver is like really balancing itself out and you know things will kind of be at bay for a while but then they will start to you know, most likely resurface um, a few more years down the road and, you know, going into childhood, teenage, adulthood, you know, things will, will just increase and it all stems from the overburdened liver when they're first born and then, you know, it getting the continual more burden. and more burden. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> overburden. Yeah. So it's important, like, you know, the way we eat you know, eliminating those troublemaker foods is a big deal. It's important for, to help the baby. For us, especially early on for you, and then yeah. for him as he grows up, he needs to eliminate these troublemaker foods so he can take that, that burden off Detox his liver. It. Yeah. And then the liver can heal itself in a natural way. Yeah. And then, you know, taking the right supplements and sit celery juice and the heavy metal detox smoothie, just clearing everything out of the body. Yeah. 
So what we did was starting at about seven weeks old, we started giving him um, just a little bit of celery juice, just a little few drops. Um, and then every you know week we would add in some more celery juice because their stomachs are so small to begin with. Um, you know, you want to make sure that they're filling up on the milk and not just the celery juice because you want them to get those calories in. But, you know, that is something that we actually probably would have started sooner um, had we known that it was okay. But we, you know, got some guidance from a health practitioner in the medical medium community and um, got him right on that celery juice. It's like our, you know, our intuition knew. We're saying do it, do it. Do yeah. it. So, you know, next baby we would definitely start it sooner so celery juice really important to um, help cleanse the liver even if it's just a few drops you know and adding on to that and then we also started giving him um, just a little bit of zinc and a little bit of b12 um, really super clean b12 and, and zinc from vimergy and we were giving them lemon balm too. And lemon balm, yeah. And then we eventually added on golden seal, but that was more geared towards his strep issues that yep. he was having. Um, but the zinc and B12 are super important for uh, the immune system and um, helping the liver. Yeah. And so, yeah, that was mainly what we were doing with him. And then we we're giving you all the right foods, which we already talked about. Yeah, you know, I eat all or I eat all plant-based. I've you know eliminated the no foods that Medical Medium lays out from my diet for the last five years now, and I've continued that. That way, I'm not feeding any viruses or bacteria, and not overburning my liver, and just supporting the baby's liver too. All right, so you know that's it. That's uh, that's everything you need to know about baby liver, and we hope this helps you out because you know being in the hospital or even just being at home having a baby can be a stressful thing. And oh then my gosh, yeah. Your baby comes out and it has jaundice, <laughs> and it kind of freaks you out. So um, I hope that we hope that this video will help you better understand baby jaundice and. Um, help give you uh, a, a calmness in a, a, a very stressful time in your life yeah and if you guys have any questions please reach out um you know if you're coming into this and not you know this is the first time you've heard of this medical medium information it could be kind of overwhelming and you know just different to hear this type of information so feel free to reach out we can help guide you on um you know looking into that information and just understanding everything better and um you know the lifestyle that we live yeah, totally so well we hope you enjoyed <laughs> this video uh we will see you guys on the next one okay see ya bye bye